Hey guys, Callum here from SSW. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm talking to you about vibe coding and why you actually don't want to be vibe coding if you're a professional software consultant working for a client. Now, if you haven't heard of vibe coding, you've been living under a rock for the last few months. It's basically when you are creating code, uh, you're creating software just by talking to an AI agent and not actually touching the code at all. So you're basically just acting like a product owner. You're visually looking at what it's giving you and saying, oh, you know, add this feature or change this around, so on and so forth. But you're not actually paying any attention to what it's doing in the background. So um, here's a funny image to sort of illustrate what's going on when you're vibe coding. So we all know the waterfall and agile approaches to getting to a product. With AI, you sort of start off with this thing that's got all these crazy, wacky features that you don't even understand, and you need to then sort of whittle it down to get to the actual product that you wanted. Um, and this is what we don't want if we're using AI to create code for us. Um, we want to actually make sure we understand everything that the AI has done. So really, if you're using AI to help develop stuff, you want to still be using this agile approach, you know, going for the skateboard, getting the scooter, the bicycle, the motorbike, and then the car. But you just want to be using AI to help you do all those things. You don't want to let AI create this, you know, wacky Homer Simpson futuristic car with all this stuff that no one understands or needs, and then have the job of trying to get it back into a regular car. Okay, so let me give you a quick example of how this works, what we at SSW recommend uh, when using AI to help write code. So here I've got a very basic Next.js app, and I'm going to show you how to add a feature to it using AI. So I've got a pre-copied prompt on my clipboard right now that I'll just paste and explain to you. So this is what I'm doing. It's not rocket science, by the way. You probably have your own way of writing this prompt. Um, of course, feel free to copy this one if you want, but it, there's there's not a huge amount of thought that's going to this. So here's my prompt. I want to create a weather feature in my site. It should involve an API that sends the current weather to the front end, which will then display it to the user. We have a future requirement for this API to detect the user's location automatically. For now, just one location is fine. So this is an important context for the AI to understand, because if I just said, I want a weather feature, and I don't give it any more detail. It has no idea um, you know, what the future plan for the weather feature is, what the MVP requirement uh, for the weather feature is, uh, nothing like that. Because all the AI agent has access to, at least most current AI agents, is whatever's in the current repo and whatever it can use its tools to dig up. So if you don't tell it something that you know, you're just shooting yourself in the foot by not sharing uh, the right context. Okay, next line, please search web for any suggestions, best practices, or potential issues. I always like to chuck that in there because why not? It barely takes any extra time to search the web and you can oftentimes um, avoid going down a rabbit hole or a wrong path just by uh, looking up what other people have done beforehand. Next line, very important, please do not implement anything yet. So I don't actually want to just send the AI off creating a Homer Simpson car right away. I want to start off by making a plan. And the reason why is that if I've got a plan, I can actually talk back and forth with the agent a little bit about what it's planning to do before it does anything. And that way I can make sure that before it even starts, what it's going to give me at the end is something that I agree with and understand fully, right? So this is very important. The next thing, um, which is also important for making a plan, output a markdown file containing a step-by-step -step list of tasks to complete, including files touched and high-level summary of changes to make. So obviously this is just the format that I want my plan to be in, um, but I want it in this format because that way, instead of just being sort of a, a chat that is moving by uh, with every additional message that gets added to it, if we create a file, that file is sort of stuck there as 
a piece of constant context that we can refer back to and we can update that file as we go. So let's go ahead and send that message in. All right, so we now have our weather feature implementation plan. Let's have a quick read through it. So we've got a bit of an introduction there. We've got some best practices and considerations. Uh, well, there's actually a lot of information here. It's actually more detailed than you probably would have thought about if you just went ahead and did it. But these are all the things that I guess you do need to be aware of if you're doing this for real. So it's good to know it all up front. Um, but the other thing to keep in mind is we want to start with our skateboard, right? We still want to have an agile approach to doing this. So a lot of this stuff is probably non-MVP, um, but I can still read through it and understand it. So we start off by configuring the environment, um, create environment variables, set up environment configs, document variables and readme. Next step, API research and selection. We're going to compare API providers, analyze pricing, create weather API account, test API endpoints. Next one, backend API implementation, the API root structure, weather API integration, cache, caching implementation, error handling, front end, core weather components, location detection, data management, main weather feature page, client side data fetching, user experience enhancements, location features. And it just goes on and on. And, and this is all very important, obviously. But one of the things that I need to do now is say, okay, I've got this very detailed and extensive plan, but what is my actual requirement that I'm trying to achieve? And so in my case, let's say I want to actually consider this from the front end first because I want to know what I'm building before I um, go and you know start building out all that complex backend stuff to support it. So what I want to suggest to the AI here is to actually just mock the API, just return a, you know, a, a mock value constantly first, and then let's build the front end. And then after that, let's jump back to the back end and update it. So let me uh, discuss with the API, sorry, with the AI now. That's the next step of the workflow, by the way. So once we plan, we then discuss. Okay, and discussing means understanding everything in the plan, making sure it makes sense, and also giving your feedback on it. So I'm going to say this. Uh, this plan looks good. However, I would like to start by mocking the um, API first, then building a simple uh, front end component to display the weather, then continuing with the uh, other steps. Please update the plan accordingly. All right, and we're done. So now our weather feature implementation plan uh, is more to my liking. We've got project setup, mock weather API, core weather display component for the front end, uh, weather icons, visual elements, basic weather page, data fetching hook, uh, and then we actually look into implementing the proper API. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have the AI start coding. And notice this is completely different to vibe coding uh, because what I'm going to do is just say, implement the very first step only and nothing more. Okay, uh, so let's do that. Please implement the first step in the plan. Do not touch anything outside the scope of the plan and please update the weather feature implementation plan uh, when done. So I need to tell it don't touch anything outside the scope because otherwise, um, depending on how overzealous your model is, you could potentially start just making additional changes, you know, implementing extra tests or um, just moving on to the next step, for example. So let's try that. All right. And so it has finished the first step. It has updated the plan accordingly. Um, so it's done both 1.1 and 1.2. 
So let's quickly run this thing and see if it actually works. And there you go. So I'm getting the London um, location and I've got a result, which is cool. One thing I don't like about this that I've just noticed now is we've actually got mock in the URL. Um, I feel like it should just have the real URL there. Uh, and then once we replace it from a mock to a real implementation, we don't have to create a whole new endpoint. So I'm actually going to, um, before I accept it, I'm going to request that it actually change the root to be the actual intended root rather than the slash mock. Okay, cool. So now it has made the updates that I've requested. Um, specifically, it's changed it so it doesn't say slash mock. It now just has the, um, what now says slash current instead. So let's go back here and make sure it works. If I change that to current, uh, we get the same result. Let's see if I change this to say Tokyo. Then we get a Tokyo update. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, so yeah, this is basically the, the last phase of the four step process, plan, discuss, implement, review as we are now. So review is a lot of back and forth, making sure that everything that it's done makes sense and uh, that you agree with the way it's done everything as well. So what's next? Well, obviously you're just seeing we've had a bunch of conversation in this agent chat, and this is why it's very important to have this plan document that we can refer to. Because, you know, if I had a, a huge amount of of, of chat there in my review, uh, where I, you know, we went back and forth a hundred times, it's probably going to forget all the details about what its original plan was. So now, um, I can say, all right, refer back to your implementation plan. We've updated it by the way, so that, you know, the things that are done are ticked off, refer back to that original plan, see what the next step is, and then just implement that. Uh, so basically, as you've seen, I'm just going to continue this step by step, working my way through it in bite-sized manageable chunks, reviewing as I go. And uh, once I take ownership of it, I commit it to the repo. And from then on, it's mine. And if anyone has any questions about it, or if anything goes wrong, I am well placed to understand what is happening and solve it. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Callum Simpson from SSW. Have a nice day.